review of Generations Megatron. Generations Megatron, I really dig the look of him in robot mode. This is how he comes packaged. And um, unlike uh, Classics Megatron, which has the kibble on the back, you'll see that he doesn't really come with kibble on the back, though he comes packaged like this. And what you're really supposed to do is fold this up. What you get is some cool Mech Gribbly Decepticon Cybertronian detail back there. His bio pretty much says that he's on the cutting edge of technology and his enemies will pay the price for not being on the edge of technology and not um, putting up a better fight than he can. Uh, it's a really poseable toy though. His joints are kind of interesting. You kind of have to get used to them. Uh, his hands are in this maniacal little clasp to them. You can see that there. It's really designed so that you can get the maniacal uh, Megatron poses that you really want. Oh yeah, that's so sweet. Uh, this shoulder blade panel back here, I'm not sure. It's like it's like a claw in its tank form, but up here it's just sort of from the game model, and you can adjust that however you want it. Though it really like seems to be designed to lock down like this just form up with the line like that. The panel moves up and down pretty easily. It's got its own double joint to it. And it's really cool that it's got these translucent purple pieces in it to give it the the glowing Tron-esque um, War for Cybertron effect. Uh, his feet are kind of mecha feet like. And if you're looking at these figures in package and you see the little black dot on top of your triangles, that's not a paint error. It's really just supposed to cut up off there, give it some extra sharpness. Almost wanted to have a torso joint, but since you can get the legs to do this, it's really unnecessary to have. And he has a good head joint. I mean, that's really all right. Let's fire on this cool little uh, energy tracking lights here and the blue thing. This whole red button basically fires the missile. See? It goes pretty far. It's a nice purple missile giving you some dark energon effects. Most people leave it out so you can have the so you won't have little purple columns sticking out. A lot of collectors like the look of that. Oh yeah. Let's get on with it. Transformation is simple but it's much like the much like the more recent animated designs. They're simple because they've been cut in an intuitive way. Uh, you have to remove the fusion cannon. Uh, one other thing that's neat is that the hands split. There we go. See, it's cut perfectly. That's it. Basically, and there you have Megatron's tank form. Yep, Megatron's tank form. It's pretty much all that a Megatron needs to be, is a uh, treaded cannon platform. These have tiny caster wheels on, on the treads, so 
something and then you have all these arcing panels. I think this should be up higher so to give it a menacing upward tilt. So that's probably more accurate. Okay. Now obviously in Warfare Cybertron you don't really use treads too much, you use hover treads. So to do that it's simply using the same joints you use for the arms to get the treads to go underside like that. So they look like hover pulsators. You can see them here in the center of the um, treads. Then there you have it. It's the more accurate uh, work for Cybertron, Megatron's hover tank salt vehicle. It's pretty good. It's got a great feeling plastic to it. Everything feels really solid. Um, I mean, the only thing that's really taking a lot of wear in this in this um, toy is going to be probably the hands clipping them in and out and the um, connection points for the cannon. But otherwise, a really great Megatron toy, and I'd say it's really close in size to the original G1 Megatron. Uh, let's transform it back, because I have time. Pop Culture Hero signing out.